Hi, welcome back. Now, suppose uh, we were to calculate a, the effect of compounding frequency in a more realistic scenario. For example, you can invest $100,000 for 10 years at a nominal rate at 8%. Alright? Now, first, calculate the effective interest rate you earn for various compounding frequencies in a year. Okay, and in the previous example, we have showed you how to do that using a data table. Now, second, okay, calculate the amount your investment will grow to in 10 years for 100,000 at 8%. Okay, and at varying compounding frequencies. So as mentioned in the previous video, we know that the higher the compounding frequency, the higher the effective interest 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 rate will be because the more chances we get to earn interest upon interest right now to illustrate this in an excel sheet we will uh, do a demonstration so this is our previous example where we have the normal interest rate number of compounding periods and the effective interest rate and uh, where we have our data table now to incorporate our investment amount okay, you can say that our initial investment Okay, it's 100,000 and um, investment period is going to be 10 years for example. Okay, now based on this, okay, we are to calculate how much our investment will grow to after a period of 10 years. Now to do that, we will use the future value formula. Now future value okay, is derived using this formula where future value equals to present value times 1 plus our effective interest rate and to the power of our time period. So example, in our case, will be present value will be 100,000 and our interest rate will be the effective interest rate and to the power of our time period. So, uh, for example, if our interest rate were to be 8%, after a year, it will be $100,000 um, times 1.08 after two years, it will be hundred thousand dollars times one point zero eight times one point zero eight, and uh, it repeats just like that. So this is how we get our future value formula. Okay, so to incorporate this into our Excel sheet, so future value of investment be equals to equals to our present value multiplied by our interest rate, our effective interest rate, and then to the power of investment period and it will give us this amount over here okay so this is uh, future value of investment now Excel provides uh, we have done this using the for our, our own formula but Excel provides a function okay called future value where we can do the same thing okay so we will have future value of investment but this time using function provided by Excel function is called by FB Future value and bracket. So the first argument will be to enter the rate. The rate is over here. Okay. Now n per means number of periods. The so number of periods will be as in years 10. Okay. Uh, in between there are no payments. We leave this as zero. And our present value. Okay. Our present value will be hundred thousand. Okay. And then we can just ignore type. So enter and we get the same amount. So just take note that it's negative, okay? So to re inverse this, we can just put present value as negative and we'll get the same number. So uh, it's exactly the same uh, depending on which one you're comfortable with, either use your own formula or to use the one provided by Excel, all right? Now we can expand the data table to include our future value of investment uh, per uh, per varying compounding periods also. Just include this to be this formula. Alright? And the same thing, you highlight this whole thing, click on data, click on table, and we want our column input to be this, but it to be based on number of compounding periods. So, and then select the argument and click OK. And there we have it. Okay, now let me just format this properly. And there we have it, uh, our effective interest rate, okay, and the future value, okay, as per varying compounding periods.
all right so this is a very simple financial model that shows the effect of compounding frequency that you can see if the higher the compounding uh, period the higher the effective interest rate and hence the higher the future value that we stand to gain from too so to quick summarize we have this these are our inputs okay these are our inputs we this are our calculated formulas and this is our data set based on our varying compounding periods.